Are you elderly or do you have an elderly relative who has recently been prescribed statins? If so, here's some important information. Stay tuned. There are a lot of issues that we need to talk about when it comes to prescriptions in the elderly. First of all is polypharmacy. Poly meaning many in pharmacy medications. Polypharmacy is a big problem with the elderly because of drug interactions. Many of the elderly are on five or 10 daily medications. The elderly are more frail and have comorbidities. You combine that with polypharmacy and the possibility of adverse interactions and adverse effects from all the medications just increases. And since many of the adverse effects from these medications, not just statins, but probably many of the medications, mimic those that are associated with aging, for example, becoming out of breath, maybe not being able to exercise as much, it's really hard to separate out the adverse effects that's just normal aging in those that are caused by the medication. And as unpleasant as it is to think about it, the elderly have a limited life expectancy. When that's the case, the possibility that somebody is going to realize the statistical benefit from any new medical therapy is somewhat reduced and that should be considered when you're thinking about whether to put somebody on a dangerous treatment such as statins. In today's video, we're gonna take a deeper look at one particular study. Now, it is a retrospective study, which means it wasn't a clinical trial that was set up. Researchers gained access to a database from Spain that had a lot of people in it, a lot of medical records in it. And going through that data, they tried figuring out certain things to answer a particular question. Now, some of the weaknesses of any retrospective study of this type is that the database may not have been geared towards the particular question they're trying to answer, but I looked through it and they did a pretty decent job. And like all papers, they do acknowledge the limitations. Their intent was to study the impact of statins on the elderly for primary prevention, which means we're talking about elderly patients who haven't previously had a heart attack and don't have any known cardiovascular disease. Now, no single study is the last word, especially a retrospective study, but useful information can often be extracted or at least hinted at from a study of this kind. So let's look at what I call the bottom line up front, what the study adds that we find in a lot of British Medical Journal articles. What they found, so I'm kind of giving away the plot before we get into talking about it, statins were not associated with a reduction in cardiovascular disease or all-cause mortality in primary prevention with people without type 2 diabetes. Diabetes. The statins were significantly related to a reduction in incidence of cardiovascular disease and in all-cause mortality in people with type 2 diabetes. The effect was substantially reduced after age 85. I think from just looking at the graphs that they gave, we could divide the population into four groups people aged 75 to 84 without diabetes, people with diabetes in that age group, and then people over 85 without, and people over 85 with, there was only one of those four groups that seemed to benefit statistically from statin therapy. So here are those graphs that I was talking about. On the left, we have a comparison of the impact of statins on elderly patients without type 2 diabetes. The blue shaded area is the 95% confidence interval, somewhat of a margin of error, and the 1.0 point represents the null hypotheses. The null hypotheses would be the statins didn't help at all. If the line is under that one, well, they seem to have helped. However, if the blue shaded area completely overlaps that 1.0 line, then statistical significance was not achieved. And you can see here, though, there was a little bit of indication that maybe statins did help in primary prevention, but certainly not enough that would warrant the conclusion that it definitely does. This is well within the margin of error, and given all the limitations of this study, I would say there's no indication here that they really did help. If we look to the graph on the right, we see the elderly people who had type 2 diabetes, and sure enough, the confidence interval is under the 1.0 line for the group of patients under 85. Once you have patients over 85, it's inconclusive. And in fact, it really looks to me like it hurts more than it helps. 
The data set is limited because as you start looking at older and older patients, there are fewer and fewer surviving. There's a lot of variation as you can see. I mean, it is possible that the statins did help according to that confidence interval, but the confidence interval is so huge, it's like nothing can really be deduced from it. One thing I do wanna point out that in both age groups, the type two diabetes with statins group had higher mortality rates than the people without type two diabetes and who weren't taking statins. So what I'm getting at is the 1.0 points on these two graphs are not the same rates of death. It's only a comparison within themselves, so to speak. And you can see the statistics here. So statins did help the type two diabetes patients in the younger age group, but it didn't overcome the disadvantage of having type two diabetes in the first place. Type two diabetes is a major risk factor for heart attack and stroke. Let's now take a look at some of the quotes from this paper. In participants older than 74 years without type two diabetes, statin treatment was not associated with a reduction in cardiovascular disease or in all cause mortality. Even when the incidence of the cardiovascular disease was statistically significantly higher than the risk thresholds proposed for statin use. Those with longstanding diabetes have a risk of coronary heart disease similar to that of patients with a history of coronary heart disease. Remember the context here. This is a group of patients who do not have a diagnosed cardiovascular disease and they're pointing out that the risk of type 2 diabetes as far as future cardiovascular events is the same as with somebody who does have known disease, which is consistent with what we find when we look at risk calculators and everything else. Type 2 diabetes is a major cardiovascular risk factor. People who don't have known disease are just as much at risk if they have type 2 diabetes as somebody who doesn't have type 2 diabetes but does have known cardiovascular disease. Moreover, current recommendations and the most implemented guidelines on cardiovascular prevention classify almost all patients age 75 or older as eligible for statin treatment based on that 10 year risk. You go to a risk calculator, the ones that will even allow you to put in these older patients, they basically say your risk is high, it's over 10% because you're elderly. Well, remember what I said about they have a limited lifespan as it is, so we're probably going to make matters worse if we give statins to many of these people. The older population might also be more susceptible to adverse effects and drug interactions owing to comorbidities in polypharmacy. I mentioned that in the first slide, although these aspects have been poorly studied. No benefits were observed in participants with type 2 diabetes and aged 85 and older. These results do not support the widespread use of statins in old and very old populations, but they do statistically support statin treatment in selected people such as those in the younger of this elderly group with the type 2 diabetes. And they point out that this is clinically plausible because age itself is probably the main contributor to death at these advanced ages. You're not going to stave it off forever. I mean, people aren't going to live to be 110. Very very often. Finally, following the current guidelines, most of the population in our study would be suitable candidates for statin treatment. In other words, they would be eligible. However, statins were only protective in one group of these, and we're gonna take a look at what group that is. If we were to divide this population into four groups, then we see that the only ones who benefit seem to be those with type two diabetes who are between 75 and 84, consistent with what the paper was saying. The other thing to note here, and this is that group, that group in the green circle, the numbers needed to treat to avoid a cardiovascular event are very high, but we have to remember these are one-year numbers needed to treat. And on this channel, we usually talk about 10-year numbers needed to treat. So it's not fair to say the number needed to treat is 341. That's horrible because you'd have to treat 341 people for a year to avoid one heart attack. That's still much better than having to treat 341 people for 10 years to avoid a heart attack. As a rough estimate, we would say the 10-year NNT here would be closer to 34. To me, that's still remarkably high. To put 34 elderly patients on a statin treatment with the thought that you're gonna benefit one of them, that really doesn't make sense to me, though it may make sense to others. That's a value judgment on my part. So here are my closing thoughts on this. First, initiating statins in healthy elderly people for primary prevention is useless. Now, what's not known is whether these findings apply to people who have been on statins all along. Is this justification for taking them off? Well, those are two different situations and we do have to be aware of that. The next thing to know is that if you have type two diabetes and it's caused by lifestyle and it isn't for everybody, I'm not 
saying, oh, your lifestyle caused your type two diabetes, that might not be the case. But if it is really lifestyle related, you've eaten a lot of junk food, high sugar, processed carbohydrates, don't get enough exercise. If you're younger and you have those, deal with it now because as you get older, this just shows what a risk factor that it is. Now, if you do have a concern about statin therapy or polypharmacy in general with the treatment of an elderly relative, please discuss with the patient's physician. Don't just say, mom, we're gonna take you off the statins. The problem here is we don't know Oh, what we don't know, it's possible that that could be very damaging. The patient's physician should at least be consulted. And if the patient is in an assisted living facility, it gets even more complicated. You don't even have the ability to take the statins away. You have to go through the medical staff at the facility. But it's worth considering how many of us have watched an elderly relative go downhill quickly and our thought is age caught up with them would be the case, but maybe it's the statins that caught up with them, and that's what we have to consider. If you appreciate this content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on this or other topics you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for listening.